Okay, so let's discuss cat and fill. So if the first station has a section with fill and the second station has cut station, cut cross section, so there is a point between the two stations where uh, there is no cut and there's no fill or the point will the point at which the field will extend from the first station. So it's interchangeably. It can also happen when the first station has a cut cross section and the second station has a field cross section. So um, the solution for that is just we extend the two slopes, okay, from a single point, then the corresponding rise or height for that is just the product of the the of the slope to the total length between the two stations. So if we have a grade here for the ground surface, okay, just multiply that to L, that's your vertical distance there. And for the road surface with the corresponding grade, GR, so there's an equivalent height to that. Now, the sum of this height, when you multiply the, the grade of, of the ground to the length of the road, as well as the grade of the road to the, to the length of the roadway, so that is equal also to the height of cut and fill. So this height of cut and fill are just your uh, height. From the center line of the road to the to the point beneath it, or the point in which we have the ground surface, existing ground surface. On the other hand, for the cut, your fill right there, or the height of fill right there, is just the height from the center line of the road up to the point above it for the existing ground surface okay so this is your fill this is your cut so by simply equating gg times l plus gr times l equals to cut and fill or height of cut plus height of fill okay we can factor out l there at gg plus gr equals to each cut plus each fill and we divide both sides by LGG uh, GG times GR to eliminate this quantity here on the left hand side of the equation uh, we will have this formula okay L equals to H cut plus H fill over G round minus G row sample problem the center height of the road at station 6 plus 420 is 2 meters fill at and station 6 plus 70 is 120 meter cut. The ground makes a uniform slope of past 4.8% from station 6 plus 420. What is the slope of the road and how far from station 4, uh, 6 plus 420 will the fill extend? And what is the stationing of the point up to which the fill is extended? So. Let's draw the figure. Okay, so we have here two meter fill at six plus four twenty. Let's say this is six plus four twenty station where uh, two meter fill. So say this is the two meter fill. Okay, it's two meters. So since it is a fill. It means that the road is right here above, above the existing ground surface. While the while the existing ground surface is at the bottom. Okay. So this is your road. This is the existing ground. And this is uh, station uh, for 
at 6 plus 420. Now uh, we have station 6 plus 470 with uh, 1.2 meter cut. So I can draw that yet. Uh, let's start here using the given slope of the ground, which is plus 6, uh, 4.8 percent from 6 plus 480. So existing ground, we draw a line with a positive slope of 4.8 percent. Let's see this one. That's your ground surface. with a slope G, G ground positive 4.8%. From that, you can now draw the uh, 1.2 meter cut. So since cut, uh, the existing ground is above and your proposed roadway is underneath. Say our uh, roadway is 1.2 meter cut below. Uh, let's say it right here. That's your uh, 1.2. 1.2 meter. This is cut. Each cut. This is each fill. Okay. Now we can draw the roadway. Okay, this is your roadway. The question for Letter A is we have to determine the grade of this roadway. No. So, a conventional solution we can uh, put all the dimensions here. We have 6 plus 470. So, the distance plus from 6 plus 420 to 6 plus uh, 470 is 50 meters. Okay. So we can form many right triangles from this figure, but the easier way is we just simply use the formula, which is the length is equals to uh, H cut plus H fill over G the grade of the ground surface minus G of the roadway or the grade of the roadway. Okay, so the required here is the grade of the roadway. So we can now substitute all the given positive. Uh, we have 50, 50 for the length equals to height of cut 1.2 plus 2.0 for the fill, uh, the grade of the ground surface for 8 percent minus grade of the roadway okay so now uh, let's substitute and uh, let's determine the grade of roadway okay by first multiplying it this one exchange the two we have 0 0.0 uh, 48 minus gr equals to 1.20 plus 2.0 over 50. Okay, compute that. And negative gr is equals to 0 0.064. Then transpose 0 0.048 to the right-hand side of the equation. We will have negative 0 0.048. Okay. So we will have the answer of Okay, so 0, 48, negative G road, 0 0.016, okay. negative, that's positive, 0 0.016, okay, multiply both sides by negative 1, we have GR equals to negative 0 0.016, okay. 0 0.016 or in percent we have negative 1.6 percent that's the grade of your roadway okay okay 
So the second solution is we use the feed. So what we will do here is we put uh, extension lines from the limits of the cut and the fill. So put horizontal lines here, horizontal lines at the cut, at the fill. Okay. So I think it's enough. Uh, so why did I put some horizontal lines here? So just to identify what uh, are the dimensions that we can use on the figure to determine this grade of roadway. So to determine yes, the grade of the roadway, so we call the grade is rise over run. So the equivalent rise of this uh, grade of your roadway is this vertical distance here, okay, which is the distance extended the, uh, the distance from the beginning of the roadway to the point which is the extended horizontal uh, line from the end point of the roadway. So we can measure only that by extending this horizontal line here. But uh, we don't have the rise yet but we already have the run which is 50 meters so we have to identify the rise first so we can determine this dimension here because uh, we don't have yet the equivalent values here. this distance vertical distance here so how can we determine this vertical distance first we determine the vertical distance of, of the ground surface from the starting station to the end station. So applying again rise over run, if we want to determine the rise, uh, means that is equals to the grade times the horizontal distance. So the grade is 4.8%. We multiply that by 50. So 4.8% times 50, that's 2.4, 2.4 meters. So this vertical distance here is 2.4 meters. The vertical distance from, from the station 6 plus 4, 70 of the ground surface to the point where it is measured horizontally from, from the extended horizontal line from the beginning of the, of the, station or this is just the difference of elevation from the starting point to the end point of the ground surface or the difference of elevation between the two stations on the ground surface okay that's 2.4 so extending that here this is your 2.4 right here okay but since we have already have a given uh, height of cut is 1.2, we can simply subtract uh, 2.4 by 1.2 so that we can have this dimension right here, right? 2.4 minus 1.2, this is 1.2 meters. Extending that here, this is 1.2. So if we have a total uh, height of field of 2 meters, we can just simply subtract 2 meters by 1.2, we have 0 0.8 meters, okay? And from that, focusing on this triangle right here, okay, which is, which we can use now in the grade of the, of the roadway, because you already have the difference in elevation of the starting point and end point of the roadway, which is 0 0.8. So the grade of roadway is rise, which is 0 0.8, over run, 50. So rise over run, 0 0.8 divided by 50. That's equivalent to, since it is going downward, we can just simply put this negative sign basing on the figure that we can see. Uh, that's negative 1.6%. So multiply this we have uh, 0 0.016 
for 1.6 percent so we apply just this that's the solution we will base on the figure that we draw okay. but the easier way is just use this formula oh, what is the length of field the length of here can be solved by determining this distance so let me just erase oh so what is required is we need to determine the length of field so if this is your field what is this horizontal distance here from the station 6 plus 420 to the point where the road and ground meet so what is this distance okay. solution here is uh, we use similar the principles of similar triangles so this triangle here at the field is similar to that triangle on the cup okay so we just equate the ratio of the height to the respective horizontal distance so it's, this is 50 we have 50 minus x on the plot so creating the two we have uh, h of field over x equals to h of cut over 50 minus x okay so substitute now uh, we have 2 over x equals to 1.2 over 50 minus x okay so we cross multiply we have 2 times 50 minus x equals to 1.2x 100 minus 2x plus 1.2x okay 100 equals to 1.2x plus 2x 100 equals to 3.2x divide both sides by 3.2 to determine x so x therefore is 31.25 meters. That's your final answer for letter B. For letter C, the required there is the stationing. Okay, the stationing of that point where the field extends. So what's the stationing here? So all we need to do is add at station 6 plus 420 by the horizontal x okay the station therefore is equal to station 6 plus 420 plus x or station 6 plus 420 plus 31.25 meters okay so stationing where the field extends is at station 6 plus 451.25 meters. That's your answer. Oh, we proceed now to, uh, to the next step. Okay. Volume by unit area method. The first one is uh, computing the volume of a truncated preset. So if we have given four stations, with different heights so to compute that uh, volume to be excavated so just take the average of the four heights and multiply it to the area of its base that's how you compute the area of uh, uh, the volume of a truncated preset so if we have an assembly of rectangular prism so it is not recommended to manually compute the area of each truncated prism form so all we need to do is make sure that each each rectangular prism are of equal area of base so that we can apply this formula so the volume is equals to area of the sum of h1 plus 2 the sum of h2 plus 3 the sum of h3 plus 4 the sum of h4 
divided by 4. Okay, so what are H1, H2, H3, H4? H1 is the height found in one area only. So H1, they are usually found at the corners. Okay, this is H1, 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 H1. Okay, it means that that point is concerned only with one area of prism. Okay, H2, height common to two areas. Okay. This point right here, it has two areas in this point. H2, H2. H3, height common to three areas. So this is H3 because it's common to these three areas here. But H4, so this is H4. This is height common to four areas. Okay? It's usually found at the middle where it has four areas. Okay. Area is the area of a single cell. Okay. Area of one. Okay. Not the area of the whole base. Or not the, the whole area. Area of a single cell only. Okay. So this this formula is only applicable to rectangular prisms of the same area of this. Okay, so let's apply that to this problem. Compute the earthwork volume to level the shown area. The positive 2 meter cell size, 30 meter by 30 meter. Okay, so going back to this, uh, this uh, lecture, uh, to this solution so this the application of this solution is for determining the volume of of soil to be excavated usually on, on a hill or is also applicable in excavating uh, pits okay so all we need to do is know the the elevation at each points okay then to determine the volume required is yes, we assign the, an elevation okay to be excavated so this hill here so we want to, to to excavate here at this elevation so what will be the volume to be excavated the volume to be excavated in this hill okay so what will be the volume of cut the same with excavation of soil. So there will be contour elevation required to, to, to be reduced on this existing elevation on the station points of the existing ground. So that's what will happen here on this example. If we have given elevation at each points okay we are required to determine the volume of earthwork to level this to level this given elevation to only elevation of two meters so let's say just assume a drawing that's elevation 7 6 6.5 6.7 let's say this is the terrain of your or this is your surface and we want to excavate at elevation at 2 only okay so what, that's what will happen you will determine this volume right here 7 6 6.5 and 6.7 so it's like that okay so what will we do if we have a cell size of 30 by 30, we can now determine the area of a single cell. 30 by 30 is 900. Oh. First, reduce the height of station to designated contour elevation. Okay, if we have a positive 2, means that if this is the given elevation, okay, we will reduce that 
by the given contour elevation, which is positive 2. Subtract positive 2 in all this given elevation. So 7 minus 2, 5. 6 minus 2, 4. 6.5 minus 4.5. 6.7 minus 2, 4.7. And so on. Deduct positive 2 to all of the given elevation. Then, uh, this count h1, h2, h2, h4. So h1 here, let's identify it first. This h1, all the red ones are h1. Okay, h2, all the yellow. h3, this one. And h4, the green. Okay, so I'll list down h1, h2, h3, h4, and take the sum of all h. Then, substitute that to the formula. And that's it. We have an area of 30 by 30 on a single cell. We have a volume of 15,232.5 cubic meter. That's your final answer. Okay. For the volume of reservoir, okay, uh, this solution is somewhat similar to the solution in determining the cross-sectional area by end area and, uh, and the Simpsons want to draw but here we're concerned of the volume okay so just like in in the trapezoidal trapezoidal rule and Simpsons want to want to rule we make strips okay we make strips of volume okay we make strips of volume at equidistant distances between those depths okay so we just determine the area at each point each depth and determine the volume so for the volume using end area method this is the first solution d over 2 a1 plus 2 the sum of ai plus an ai sum of areas of interior section so these are ai intermediate sections so this solution is somewhat similar to the trapezoidal rule okay volume by cosmoidal formula somewhat similar to the solution in in what simpsons wanted to so again it should be uh, that if there is an even number of sections use again an area on the last segment so again uh, we need an odd number of um, number of areas or the number of depths but if it is even so the last segment should be computed by uh, end area to get the volume so we have an additional area here Okay, just determine the problem by entering your method. So let's apply that. Here, this sample problem. Given, uh, given data, determine the volume of the reservoir. Okay, first, using the end area method and then the prismoidal problem. The end area method, okay. Here's the formula, d over 2 plus a1 and 2 the sum of intermediate areas or areas, interior areas, okay, and a. This is the last elevation. So substitute that all of the given uh, areas, okay, in this problem. Then we can now solve the problem of 6891 uh, 0000. If I press formula, I substitute again on the formula. Okay, since the number of stations or number of contour elevations are 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, it means that. Uh, we can only apply prismoidal formula up to the fifth contour elevation. 
Then the remaining segment from the fifth to sixth is we apply and here you know that. So this is for small bell and this is for an area, the last side. That's why in our solution, this is the prismoidal formula and the remaining segment is an end area method. So substituting all the given, all the given data on the formula, we have a created volume of 6786833333. So that's our answers. So again, comparing the answers, um, their answers are almost near. Okay. But there are slight difference on the values if you have computed. But both reach six million. Okay, within six million. Okay. So that ends our lecture. Thank you for watching. God bless.